What's up, everyone? We are live at 5 from Broadway.com. I am Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. It's March 1st. It's March 1st. And who's joining us? Content producer Matt Roden. And it's cheese. It's March 1st and it's cheese. What Do you know the reference? Mean? Next to normal? Come on. Anybody? Oh. Sorry. That was it's March 1st and it's cheese. All right. Never mind. <laughs> Deep cuts, Matt. Deep cuts. <laughs> Deep cuts. Uh, hey, Beth, Lexi Lawson is here. From Hamilton. The smash hit Hamilton. We're very excited to have her. Yeah. Uh, but first, let's start with today's top five. All right, so kicking things off, uh, Ben Platt is leading this new movie called Love and Oatmeal. Two things I very much love. You love love, yeah. and you love oatmeal, yep. and you love Ben Platt. Who doesn't? So Ben Platt, Tony winner. From I feel like D we hear a new Ben Platt project every week right, now. Right. So, okay. So let's <laughs> He's talk. At that let's point talk. In his career. Let's talk about uh, Ben Platt post Dear Evan Hansen, shall we? Yeah. He has a solo recording deal with yes. Atlantic Records. Yes. He's going to star in that Netflix series, right. The Politician, which has music in right. it apparently. Right. And now he has signed on to start a feature film called Love and Oatmeal. Love and oatmeal. Two things Matt Roden loves. Um, <laughs> Let me just describe the movie to you, because okay. no one knows anything about it. All I know it. is that Ben Platt wrote on social media that he loves this story ever since he first read it. Good. And he's very well, excited I'm happy. for us all to know about he it. He should like what he's doing. He's going to play the leading role of, so wait, the let's just say. The leading player. The leading player. Can we just say also, he has a Tony Award. He's, oh, yeah. He has a Grammy Award. Yep. I'm sure the Netflix thing will bring him an Emmy, so this is the Oscar moment. Oh, okay. You're this welcome. Is it. You're welcome. Egot. So, <laughs> Egot. So, he will be playing the role of Scott, a 20 something aspiring writer who, in the wake of his father's sudden death, stay with me, people, sees his dream of moving to Paris put in jeopardy when he is forced to temporarily take in his wildly unpredictable, mentally ill sister. That sounds good. I don't think her name is Love or Oatmeal, but somehow that fits in. This is uh, directed by Peter Sattler and written by Steve Waverly. It's a tearjerker, according to Ben Platt's emojis. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and I love oatmeal. Okay, um, some sad news. Harvey Schmidt passed away today. Yeah, so Harvey Schmidt wrote The Fantastics, which is the right. longest running musical ever, right? In New York. He wrote it. Is there another one? Yeah, I was gonna say, wait, <laughs> wait, oh my God! Wait, you just threw me off. <laughs> I don't know. Is it New York? How long is it? New York, the center of the world? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, he wrote it, of course, with Tom Jones, yeah. and um, he died yesterday at the age of 88. Um, and he also wrote 110 The Shade, 1963, the Broadway musical uh, with Tom Jones, and they got a Tony nomination for that. And you know, I first saw it when Audra McDonald. Did yeah, when it was the revived. Revival. That's right. Yeah, two fantastic shows, uh, and they wrote other shows too. And there's a lot of Really, really great music that people really love. Try to remember. I knew Try you were going to gonna say that. I was hoping you would say that. It's the best song in the show. Um, Amy and the Orphans opens tonight off Broadway, and we did a fresh face, right, Beth? Yes, we did. Okay, so I saw this you last You saw night. the show yesterday. You were very excited. You actually texted me how much you liked it. I and did. And Beth doesn't do that often. No, well, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm about to spew my opinion at you people, so get ready. This is a great show. This is Lindsay Barantino as the playwright. It's directed by Scott Ellis. Oh. Um, Jamie Brewer, who you know and love from American Horror Story, is in it, and it was written for her. Yeah. Oh, it was? Yes, it oh, was okay. written for her, and also stars Deborah Bunk, who's worked with Scott Ellis Amazing. many times, Curtains, Steel, Steel Pier, and so on and so forth, and Mark Blum, and Vanessa Aspiaga, who is hilarious as usual. And it's, in the tropics. And in the tropics. Is that the first time we saw her? Yes. 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 yes she's great. It's she's just, a lot of things. It's just a great show. It's really, really funny, but it's moving... Go see this show and and happy opening to them. But we also had Jamie Brewer here and we did a whole video. Yeah, and, photo and shoot you know with her she talks about she was lovely. She's such so a great time. sweet and yeah. earnest, and she yeah. talks about being a role model and yeah. walking in Fashion Week a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's cool. It's great, it's very good. Um, the entire squad at Parisian Woman got portraits at Sardi's last night. The whole squad. Okay, the whole cast. So, so whole, the whole squad, <laughs> squad goals. Squad goals. Uh, you know, when you, I, somebody really needs to explain to me how you get a Sardi's caricature because I've heard all kinds of rumors over the years. But the whole cast of Parisian Women got, <laughs> I, I'm sure, and I mean, Pope. so it's interesting. Some people at the beginning of their careers, some people like Blair Brown. Tony uh, Winner. Finally got a yeah. Sardi's caricature. But of course, Uma Thurman. Making her Broadway uh, debut. Philip Sue. Right. Speaking of Hamilton, Josh Lucas, Martin Sockus. Is that how you say it? I think it's Sockus. Okay. But we, uh, okay. But the, and I just want to say, Sardi's caricatures can be all over the map, but you know. You mean what they look like? The, well, first of all, if you go to the restaurant and you see them, they've changed over the years, right? They used, they to, used be, to be take one feature and really exaggerate yeah, they were, it. Yeah, yeah. So this is a very Hollywood version of the Sardis. Glossy and nice. Yeah, if you look at the photos on the site, um, they definitely were like, oh, Uma's here. Let's make sure everybody looks really good. It's, it's, it's a good glossy. So congratulations. I'm going to go visit you at Sardi's. 
cast of the Freeze Woman. Oh, and it ends on March 11th, so you'll have another like, week, and, week a and a half to see it. Mm-hmm. And last but certainly not least, my favorite, Bernadette Peters turned 70 years old last night. No, let's just be clear. You, We all love Bernadette yeah. Peters, but she is your favorite because she plays red carpet. Series regular. Red carpet series challenge regular. better than anyone. Oh, yeah. I mean, on she the takes red it carpet, seriously. Like, she, yes, she's, she's, she's great. So we Bernadette Peters is the queen of Broadway. She, she doesn't look a day over I don't know, 32. She's so she's gorgeous. She's kind of at the height of her career right now with this Hello Dolly turn. I feel like incredible. everything she's ever done is at the height of her That's career. True. She's just so amazing. So they had a... You Except know, for maybe the goodbye girl. Okay, we're not going to get that. I mean, it was good, but it just wasn't really like, you didn't go, well, that's better than saying the park with George. Deep cut, deep cut, deep cut there. Uh, okay, if you want to call it deep. Uh, she, <laughs> they had a surprise cake for Miss Peters and uh, the cast celebrated. We have photos and video on the site. You know, she's just the best. I also just want to mention before we go... We have two show starting previews tonight. Yes. Three Tall Women at the Golden Theater and Lobby Hero, which is now called the Hayes Theater. That's what they're calling it. So oh, we, Helen's out. It's just Hayes. It's just the Hayes. So two okay. revivals are, are starting performances tonight. So happy previews to them. Cool. On that note, Beth. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Lexi Lawson? I would love to. Lexi Lawson is originally from the Bronx, but raised in Newburg. Is that how you say it, Lex? Newburg? Newburg, Newburg New York, of the beautiful Catskill region, and has been entertaining audiences nationwide since she was seven years old. She is currently playing Eliza Hamilton in Lynn manuel Miranda's Tony-winning hit, Hamilton. This marks her return to the music of Miranda, having performed in the first national tour of In the Heights in the leading role of Vanessa. She also portrayed Mimi in the Rent Broadway tour, and she's here today to talk to us about Hamilton. If you have questions for Lexi, you can leave them, you should leave them, in the comments below right now, and we'll get to as many as we possibly can. And now, here's Paul and Lexi. Hi, Lexi Lawson. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? like your outfit. Thank you. It's a good, it's a good jacket. Thank you. You're giving me a little spring. <laughs> I feel like you're warming it up a little bit. Trying. It's still, it's still winter. Yeah. It's how you doing? It's 60 degrees today, so I figured I'd put on a floral mm-hmm. ensemble. I love, I love that. I love that about you. Uh, how's Hamilton? Yeah, it's you, good. You've been there like, what, like a year and a half yeah, now? Yeah, it's been a year and a half right? since July of 2016. Amazing. Yeah. And so, so does it just feel like total, like, I'm sure when you got there, you were like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm in Hamilton. But now it's just like, I'm in Hamilton. This is like, this is my job. This is what I do. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> no, it's, I still pinch myself every day. I actually bought, I'm obsessed with Home Goods and Marshalls. I pretty much am frequently shopping there I, when I, I'm I, not at I Hamilton. I knew I recognized you from right. the aisles I, so, of Home Goods. I just, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So I just found a, a picture that says, uh, like, pinch me, please. And that's because I always say, like, I'm pinching myself because I'm in Hamilton. So I found one. The universe gave me one. To hang up. Can we talk about <laughs> that row at Home Goods that has all the inspirational quotes? I'm obs- yes. You right? can, it's if all you quotes. Are and ever looking for any inspirational quote? Go to Home Goods. <laughs> totally. This is not a paid advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was your audition like? How, how did you get the, in, into the Hamilton family? So, um, <clears throat> what's really funny about Hamilton is when I first saw the show, I was living in Los Angeles, and I saw the show when I came to New York. Saw the show with a friend of mine, and my friend was like, "You have to be in the show," and I was like. I would love to, but I live in LA, you know? I was living my life there with my husband and my doggie. And uh, I said, no, you know what? No, you're right, I'm gonna be in this show. And so six months, I saw the show six months before I had an audition. Okay. I didn't even know if I was going to have an audition, but I was prepared. There's this app called Acapella, uh-huh. and so I put myself on tape for the role of Angelica. There was me in the middle, and then there was about eight other me's around me singing all the harmonies and it was sounded amazing oh my God, how cool just in case they weren't going to give me an audition i was ready to send that in i mean this is like some <laughs> modern stuff they were going to give me the job and um but they gave me an audition luckily uh, they they called me in for angelica and eliza uh-huh. first to do uh, cuts of those i lied to casting what'd you say i said to them uh I, I i was like i'm just i'm thinking to myself i'm just gonna start from the beginning of satisfied because i've been practicing this for six months now and i want them to know that i know the whole song okay and so uh i started from the beginning and then casting cut me off and they were like this isn't the cut uh, we have for you. And I was like, oh, well, this is the cut. This is what they gave me. And they're like, oh, okay. And they let me do the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> normally people don't, people, normally people do less, I feel like. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, I didn't get that. So sorry. <laughs> like, like, I'll do the whole song. I'll do the whole song. And then I sing Helpless, of course. And uh, they called me back to New York. And when they called me, 
back to New York, um, they they have they asked me to sing pretty much all the female material. Uh-huh. Uh, and at this time, I didn't know that Broadway was even an option. I thought it was just Chicago or the uh, right. the, the the tour that went sit down, the, the the tour. Sit down in California, yeah, yeah. the California one. And so when they called me and they said, oh, and by the way, when I was saying burn in the audition, I mean I could barely get through it. I was just sobbing <laughs> there's another like just okay you, okay keep going and I was like oh, okay and so <laughs> I, I was and then and then I got the call I was in the garage in California when I went back and I started screaming bloody murder I mean everybody who lived in that apartment complex heard me <laughs> I was screaming I was like ah, man! but I got the call to play Eliza on Broadway so so here I am <laughs> w- would you still like to play Angelica I mean, yeah, yeah, I would love to play Angelica okay, at, at some point in my life. Right. It's uh, going to be open for some time, so I <laughs> <laughs> I assume that it like, you know, 5 to 10 years from now maybe they would consider me for Angelica. So you you did the In the Heights tour as Matt mentioned. Yes. And you played Vanessa. Um, yes, I yeah. did. Yeah, first and national. So did you know Lynn Manuel Miranda? Did did you meet Lynn and So when I first auditioned for uh, okay, so I have to paint sorry, I'm like such a girl. I like details. I no, tell it's okay. them I'm Okay, in. great. So I was doing rent. Uh, yeah, I was Mimi. In, I was playing Mimi you and Rent. You played all my favorite yeah. roles. Yeah, yeah, with Adam Pascal and Anthony Rapp. Oh, okay, that worked. Okay, yes. that tour, right. That one. And uh, we were in Japan. And uh, I put on It Won't Be Long Now. I was on like the 33rd floor of this hotel room, just to paint the picture, um, this Japanese hotel room. Uh-huh. And all the windows were open, and I was singing It Won't Be Long Now as loud as I could, envisioning that I was going to play Vanessa one day. You know, there was no train outside your window. There's no train, no. no. About, <laughs> no. no right. uh-huh. and, and so um, finally when I got the audition, it was right when I ended Rent, and I and I saw I like peeked my head in like I could see like the people going in and out for the auditions and then I saw that it was Lynn and I turned around I was like oh, I'm not going in there I'm not going in there because I was so like such a fan of his and I couldn't believe he was in the <laughs> audition room um, and so I went in and I auditioned for the role I was so nervous because Lynn was in there but I got a chance to do In the Heights with Lynn when he came to Puerto Rico. Oh. When, when the tour came to Puerto Rico, yeah. he joined in for Puerto Rico, and uh, it was amazing. He's a wonderful person. So. Has, is, is he around at Hamilton at all? I mean, do you yeah. see him? Like, yeah. Ever, yeah, yeah, he comes. He yeah, I know he's a busy guy, and there's yeah. a lot of things going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah he just had his uh, another baby. Yes, yes, and, yeah. But he brings uh, Sebastian in. Uh, I think it was like a couple days ago he brought him in and uh-huh. and just like peeked his head in. And Sebastian is so beautiful. They ha- their kids are oh, they're so gorgeous. They're they're the cutest. So, so you grew I up in like you like grew up in Newburgh. I, I yeah, I'm from the Bronx originally. Okay, Newburgh's uh, like an hour north. Yep, it's an uh-huh. hour north, and uh, my parents moved us moves, moved us, my sister and I, up to Newburgh uh, when I was seven years old. So uh-huh. I, I say I'm from Newburgh because right. that's what I associate most with. Right, for uh, the school mostly. Yes, exactly. And so when did you start performing? Did, were you a little performing girl? Were you yeah, a little jumping I was. on the table, dancing I was. Around? It was funny because I was always really quiet because uh, I would observe my crazy family all the time. <laughs> and so there was a time when I like came home and I was like, Mommy, I got the lead in the school musical. I, and I, she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to play Alice in Alice in Wonderland. And then I sing the song. I was like, I give myself very good <laughs> advice. So here's the problem. I remember all the songs that I had to sing from like 7 to 15 and after that. I mean, I go over my lyrics every day for uh-huh. Hamilton. It has been a year and a half and I'm terrified I'm so, you, so that's all the lyrics your you could your mind could handle. Right, you were so, done at fifteen. Uh, yes, now, I just, now you can't learn anything. Right, sound of music. I got you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> what did you play in sound of music? I was uh, Louisa. I wanted to be Brigitta. Oh, and they okay. didn't give me Brigitte, but it's fine. And I was sassier, Louisa. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> hey, Matt Roden. Yes. Are there any questions out there from the fans? Some great questions okay, from Sarah Beth. If you could play any character, male or female, in any show off Broadway, Broadway, West End, a touring production, or a show that's closed, so literally like any show ever, <laughs> any um, role in the world, male or female, in any would, show, in any show, who would you play and why? Brigitte. <laughs> Brigitte, that her name? <laughs> is that her name? It's Brigitte. Yeah, her. <laughs> the sassy one. The yes. No, who do you want to play? Gosh, that's so tough. Anyone. Only one? All right. For give now. Me, yeah, I okay. just want one. <laughs> um, 
Hmm. Oh, I can't answer that. I just can't. I can't put that into the universe. Do you have it in There's your no dream realm that you'd want to say? It helps sometimes to say it. Let's get it out there. I would like to play Angelica in Hamilton. Oh, there you go. Great. You go. That sounds good. Yeah. Would you ever play any of the men in Hamilton? Who? Would you ever want to play any of the men I, in Yeah, Hamilton? I would totally play Aaron Burr. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, how many times did you see Hamilton, David wants to know, before stepping into Eliza? Once. Great. Wow. wow. Only one? So you just saw that once or... Wow. Before it I auditioned? Was... Before yeah. you went in. Oh. No. Because then before you actually, watch before my, Yes, before my debut when I joined right. on July 11th, 2016. I think I saw every <laughs> single show once they hired me. Okay. I mean, I would not leave that theater. <laughs> I was like, like, I'm staying. <sighs> so how does that work yeah. when you're going into a hit like Hamilton where it's really hard to get tickets? Right. Is there a seat for you? Are nope. you, you you're like hovering in the back? Yep. Are you okay by yeah, the curtain, by the person. exit door? Totally. And, okay. All the stage crew, they're like, you're in the way. And I was like, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just need to learn this show. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, George wants to know who has been your favorite celebrity guest who's seen Hamilton while you've been there. It's been hmm. a lot. I mean, it is a thing. People people come to <gasps> Hamilton. Clive Davis. Oh, were you there? Okay, Clive. I'm a huge like pop fan. I mean, you can quiz me on any. You okay? Remember that like Shazam or there's like a show like Shazam where they would play right, it for yeah, like totally. a second, and you I could be on that show oh. because my knowledge like of name pop, that tune. Yes, that's what they and, call it Shazam and, now. They call it Shazam now. <laughs> my knowledge of pop music is like extraordinary. I should win an award for it. And so because of that, I'm obsessed with like Clive Davis. He he founded and not that he founded, but he brought to yeah. light Whitney Houston yes. and all these like huge pop Okay, stars. so if you could do a musical using the catalog of any Mariah Carey. Oh, wow. yes. Let's right do away. that. Let's do that. Now, what do you think? Should the plot be the life of Mariah or should it be some crazy plot just using her songs like Mamma Mia? That's a, you know, she has an interesting life. But, but I, I don't think know if we want to cool. see her life story. No, I think I it's th cooler. Yeah, I think we've seen like a crazy, just... like, Escape to Margaritaville using right. Mariah Carey songs. <laughs> Let's write that. Yeah, okay. After we go off the air, we're going to write, we're going to yeah. figure out that plot. Don't It'll steal take about the 20 idea minutes. either. And we'll get it on Broadway in a couple years. <laughs> and you'll be in it. Great. Okay. Okay, I'll play cool. Mariah Carey from this age. What's your go-to Mariah Carey song? <laughs> mm, that's so tough. Um, I love Vision of Love, which is her first yes. number that, yes. she, that she did. Um, but I also love her, um, like, Butterfly album. Oh, oh that's my favorite. Yeah, like Breakdown album. is definitely <laughs> yes, break my favorite. Yes, 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 yes. I love Breakdown. That's like that is. Oh I my, love. Oh, yeah. I, knew I think it. we're gonna have to pull clips when people book jobs <laughs> to be like they they put that out in the universe on live at five first. So when you book Mariah Carey, we're gonna do that. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple people are asking, and this is a good question. What is your favorite moment in the show that the audience might not notice? And Michelle added to that, perhaps one that is lost in the spectacle of the show. Something you know that people don't really see? Hmm. These are really great questions. Yeah, they are. They're pretty deep. Um, hmm, we're, we're fairly silly. Our cast is like a fairly silly cast. And so <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for this. But yesterday, um, there was a box. This may not answer the question, but I feel like telling the story because it's really funny. They're going to love it. <laughs> uh, there's a box of Girl Scout cookies that were waiting backstage. And I was like, whose cookies are these? Like, everybody in the cast is like, why would they torment us with a box of Girl Scout cookies? And so I kept on like walking around like, cookies, these cookies. I was like, who's Aunt Lisa? Because it said Aunt Lisa on the box. <laughs> and so, like, the whole show, um, I would say to Joanna, who plays Peggy Mariah, I'd just look at her and go, cookie. <laughs> <laughs> And she would just be like, and so like the whole time we were all talking about these cookies. So and throughout like, the show, you were all talking about the cookies. I just go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the type of stuff we don't see from the audience. I like no, that. No, I don't see it because we do it very subtly. I like that. Um, <laughs> have there been any uh, onstage mishaps, any fun onstage mishaps in Hamilton? Oh, all the time. We have this thing called uh, the Burst Corner where you can find it on our Instagrams. Our whole cast have posted a Burst Corner where we talk about uh, the lyric that we messed up. But in my case, I have not messed up any lyrics because like I've said before, I go over my words. You really do. I really go okay. over my words <laughs> right before I sing them because I'm terrified I'm going to mess up. But what I did do was about two months ago, I was getting my, getting my thoughts together for Burn and then I walked out with a lantern and I put the lantern down and I realized that I didn't have any letters to burn in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to bring the letters. Wow. So, so what was, do you do? 
My Did you sing it? <laughs> what? You just sang it? Yeah, I was like watching it burn. <laughs> I was like, I hope these people, you know, can use their imagination because I'm just sitting there like, like with my ears down, like with my hands in my pocket, just like, okay, I gotta get off. I'm so embarrassed. It is I a mean, that's moment. the whole point yeah, of the song. The <laughs> um, this is a this is a great last question. Okay. Great last question. What would you do? If you won the lottery more than ninety six thousand. Oh. You know, I actually had this conversation. This is very funny, and I think we only have a couple of seconds. Is that right? I hope not. Okay, because this is kind Come of long. On. So um, we had this conversation yesterday. <laughs> My husband and I. He went out. To, he went. He went out to go have uh, drinks with a friend, and they said, "If you won the lottery, I'm sorry. If your friend bought you a winning lottery ticket, okay. would you give them money?" And my husband said he'd only give ten percent, oh. and I was like, "Ugh." And then the other guy said only 10%. And then my buddy Peter was like, no, I'd give him half because that's what you would do. And I said the same thing. I would give half away because at the end of the day, like all those big numbers, I mean, really, what are you going to do with all that money? So if I did win the lottery more than 96000 first, I would definitely share it with people who are close to me. And I would definitely nice. donate it. I'm, I was telling like Shane that I'm who's our PR guy. Hi, Shane. Yeah. Uh, that like children are very important to me. And um, I would happily give that away to them in some sort of charity or organization. I just don't think you need that much money if it was like $10 million. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, I'd invest it, so eventually I'd make more. But, um, so yeah, that's my honest answer. Would you do me a favor? Sure. Would you sing a line or two of the Vanessa part of 96,000? If I win the lottery, you'll never see me again. And that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to be? I'm going to be on that island that Usnavi sings about, whichever one that is. <laughs> you will never see me again. I am gone. Lexi Lawson, you are delightful. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by, everyone. Go check out Hamilton. You can get tickets if you really try and if you're patient. You, 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 you'll get in. It's, it's good. It's worth the wait. Matt, why don't you take us out? I'd be happy to. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, you can watch us live every single weekday here on Broadway.com's Facebook page at 5 p.m. That's why it's called Live at 5. And if you want a different way to consume this show and you are a fan of podcasts, you can subscribe to the Live at 5 podcast, which we release every single day right after this live stream. Join us tomorrow when Disco Pigs, Ivana Lynch from Harry Potter, you know her, uh, she joins us live in the studio. Have a great Thursday, everybody. Bye.